Have you gone down the rabbit hole of looking for a new mechanical keyboard? You have so many options. Full board, 10 keyless, wired, not wired. What if you didn't have to choose? Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Asus Claymore 2 wireless mechanical keyboard. This particular keyboard comes in two different key styles. You will either have your red or your blue. In my case, I chose blue. Blue will actually give you a little click sound when you type. And we'll touch on that a little later. Now, why did I say this keyboard pretty much has all the options that you could ever possibly want? Well, as you can see right here, this is it in its full board state, which means you have a number pad attached to your keyboard on the right. However, the trick for the Claymore 2 is now TKL 80% keyboard. You don't have to pick anymore. You can have it however you like. Also, the number pad, can attach to the other side if you wanted to. I will state right now, the number pad right here is not a magnetic connection. You did see me have to shift it into a connected position. So you cannot use this as a wireless standalone keypad. It does need to be attached to the keyboard itself. However, when you do have the number pad attached, Asus also gives you a magnetic wrist rest that slides into place while you're typing. It is rather cushioned, but some people don't like having wrist rests with their keyboards. I'm one of them. When I did use it, it was it was padded enough to raise my wrists to, in some cases, an uncomfortable position for me. You might be different. One other problem, because as this magnetically locks into place, if for whatever reason you're not using the number pad, well, you've got this empty space. Because if you try and center it and pick it up, you'll notice, unlike when I had it attached there, it doesn't move. Because when it's centered, there's no magnets. Small downside to the wrist rest. Bringing our detachable number pad back into view for a moment, I just wanted to bring it up. You have four programmable keys as well as a volume scroll right here. The volume scroll doesn't click or anything, it just kind of rolls. These are pre-programmed for your media controls with previous track, skip track, play pause, and mute audio. However, using the Armor Crate application for the ROG here, you can actually change those. However, it does need to be attached to the keyboard. You do have volume controls accessible as secondary keys on your keyboard here. If we bring it up like this, you can actually see a lot of those have secondary keys. You use the function key in order to change the volume. It's not great, uh, you know, you figured the volume control would have been right there, would have been nice, but it's not a deal breaker. If you're used to using a laptop, you kind of already use the function key to change volume anyway. Going to flip over the number pad just so you could see it. It does have the same rubber on the back of the Claymore and does have a single position foot that'll pop out. If we bring over the Claymore and flip it over, you'll see those same rubber here and here, and then little feet that flip out. Now the only reason that I'm not flipping over the keyboard with the number pad attached is while it does sit very nicely, it is a little loose when you pick it up. So here, you'll notice a little, little move of the keypad when I go to pick it up. It's not terrible, it's not a deal breaker, but it's also why I'm not flipping it around as I'm talking to you. Some of the features that we're looking at with the Claymore 2 here, Upper left hand corner, you see a green indicator light. Well, that's actually the battery percentage. This has a 4,000 milliamp battery. You get 144 hours if all the lights on the board are off, 61 hours if the lights are at 50%, and then 43 hours at 100% brightness. That green indicator lets you know you've got between full and 75% battery. If you see that blue, you have 25 to 75, and then red breathing just means you should be charging it. When and if you plug this in, and you're using it, green breathing means it's charging, purple breathing means there's fast charging. Yes, this has fast charging capability, which can be turned on and off using function 12 on your keyboard. That will toggle between the pass-through mode and the fast charging mode. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's actually take an opportunity to remove our number pad and come around to the top of your, your keyboard. Here we have a USB port. You have your on off switch. Here is our USB C type port. One thing that you might notice right over there, well, that's a hollow space. What is that for? Well, that is for the included magnetic dongle that wirelessly communicates to your computer. This houses it and keeps it in place so you don't have to worry about it falling out. Let me show you. Magnetically in place. Shake, 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 shake. 
still in place but easy enough to remove. And since we started taking a walk around our actual keyboard, I will show you the left side right there. That is a plastic cap. And on the right, I have removed the plastic cap so that I could attach the number pad. Both the number pad and the right hand here come with extra plastic bits so that you can keep them protected from dust. With the keyboard, you also get several adapters. One being a USB to USB-C and then a USB 3 to USB-C. You also get braided cable, which I can get that to focus, braided cable, which is USB-C to USB-C. Now I have been purposely trying to avoid a lot of technical specs and jargon because, well, if you're just starting off down this rabbit hole, you can get bogged down very quickly, especially when looking at mechanical keyboards. I know I did myself. So why don't we come in a little closer to some of the keys and we'll talk a little bit about why the keys for the Claymore 2 are so special. First being that you have anti-wobble keys. What this means is, and I'll flash up on the screen here, the keycaps themselves are actually four different pegs that sit on the sides of the key. This allows the key itself to have less wobble than something that's centrally located. You also allow more light through the key itself because the center point is hollow. However, and I'm gonna turn off some lights very quickly, it's not 100%. Right here for this key particularly, and this key right here, and you can kind of tell here, the second set function up. Even with this board being at 100%, they're not quite as bright as they could be. They're a little dim. That's not a deal breaker, but I just want you to know, even if you have 100% brightness with the center stem not being blocked, you're still gonna have some keys that aren't as bright as you might expect. The keys themselves each have a wobble-free X stabilizer, which is really cool. It is just an X-shaped mechanism that goes up and down that helps the key to seamlessly move up and down. And right here, if we bring the board into place, you can kind of see it here with the space bar. You can see it right there. Now, you'll notice, I do appreciate the spacebar has extra reinforcement on either corner, even though the key itself, the mechanism, is right in the middle. Which just lets you know, they put a lot of thought into this. Now, whether you get the reds or the blues like I have here, you're actually looking at a light actuation rather than a mechanical button. So, when you press it down, you are interrupting a beam of light, and that is what actually sends a signal that your key has been depressed. I will again flash up some really interesting stuff that you've probably seen if you've already been looking at this particular keyboard, just so you know, hey, these are the things that you're looking at, these are how things function. Now, for myself, having never had a mechanical keyboard before, I actually got myself a set of keys. Now, these are for the cherry key sets, but they will give you a good idea of how the blue and red keys will feel. And I just picked this up on Amazon, and the beauty of this thing is you can actually pull these out and move them around so you can tap as you go along. Because, I will admit, when I first got this, I'm like, well, they don't feel that different. And the same thing when I got this. If you're just going tap, 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 they all feel the same. But once you put your hand on it and start testing with each individual finger, you will notice that, hey, the keys themselves do feel a little different. So again, if this is your first time looking at a mechanical keyboard, you might want to think about something like that. This way you know what you're getting yourself into. The keyboard itself can hold six unique profiles and does have the really nice option of being able to create macros on the fly. So whether you're getting this for gaming or getting this for work, you can create those macros on the fly. And I will admit, originally I got this for when I was working at home and gaming was actually a secondary thought for me. However, it is primarily a gaming keyboard, but let me show you how easy it is to create a macro using the keyboard without anything else. Simply select function alt, You'll know you have this because it's blinking, and then type in whatever you like your macro to be. Once done, select function alt again, and you have to assign a number to it. So in this case, one. And now, if I want to run this function, I simply select alt macro. And it's good for things that you have to constantly type over and over again for work. 
Now, if you had something else in mind, such as needing to use this for gaming, for situations where, for whatever reason, in order to collect all of your collectibles, you need to break down a wall, and you don't feel like cycling through all of your skills over and over and over again, again, we simply select Function Alt, we create our macro, which will be, here we can see that it's already showing that one of my macro selections I can't do because it's red, so I'm gonna put it there, and then I would simply go boop boop, And then in ha instead of having to sit through and manually do that over and over and over and over again to collect what I want to collect, I could just keep going, function this, function this, and then I don't have to worry. You heard me make mention of that was on the keyboard itself, creating macros. The fact that you have six profiles saved to the keyboard itself. There also is a accompanying software that you can have for this keyboard. Some people like it, some people hate it. It's called Armor Crate. And let me show you what you can do for this keyboard using Armor Crate. This will be the software portion for the Asus ROG Claymore 2. The software portion is using Asus's Armor Crate. And I do know that a lot of people have mixed feelings about Armor Crate and its usages. This is just going to be the basics of what you can do with it and whether you actually like it or not. That's up to you to decide at a later date. But I'm going to let you know what you can do. And right now I have the Claymore 2 plugged into my computer because in order to actually activate Armor Crate, you will need a hardwired connection from your Claymore 2 to your PC. I'm gonna start things off over here on our devices section. As you can see, it's got our keyboard layout right here and it's saying, hey, here are all the keys that you have at your access. What would you like to do? Well, we have our media keys that are part of our numpad that's detachable. If I select that, we can change what that M shortcut key will actually do. Now, that's not just for these keys here. We can do that for any key. We can select what we would like it to do. Likewise, on this screen, we can also disable Alt-Tab and Alt-F4, because I think we've all been there where we're gaming or doing something work-related and don't want to be able to do that. Well, maybe Alt-Tab you want to keep enabled, but definitely Alt-F4 you can turn off. That's all located here under our keys section. Next, we move over to the RGB indicator. At the top of your Claymore 2, you have lighting effect for either battery mode or sync with keyboard light. And depending on what lighting effects you have situated is what will happen when you change from sync with keyboard light or change to battery mode. Moving on, we have our lighting. This is gonna be where you can do all of those really cool lighting effects. Right now I have it on static, which just has the lights, has the keyboard RGB lights, just static, they're on. I have selected a singular color, in this case red. If I click on here, I can change anywhere in this color wheel, or if I know the actual key codes for it, I can type it in there and generate the color, the color that I would like. I also have it at 50% brightness. You can control your brightness from here, but you can also do that from the keyboard itself. Moving on, we've got our breathing effect. Now our breathing effect is going to kind of be pulsating on the keyboard. Now we have a single effect right now showing, but if we wanted to, I can select double, and what that will do is that will change, in this case, between red and this purple color, and it will just pulsate on the keyboard with those colors. We can also select random right here, and then it will just randomly pulsate colors on the keyboard. Likewise, we also have our LED brightness, 50%, and then we could select our speed. Right now it's at normal, but if we wanted to, we could move that up to fast and it will pulsate much faster. Now I'm gonna bring this back down to normal because well, that's kind of where I like things. We're gonna move on to color cycle, and here we go. This is our color cycle. There's no option for you to change the colors, you can change your LED brightness and your speed just like you could before. Coming across, we have our rainbow effect. Now the rainbow effect is going to be partitioned on segments of your actual keyboard. Mirroring those segments, you have purple, blue, aqua, green, yellow, orange, red. You can plus or minus to add more segments. You can change an individual color. Like let's say we don't like this red, we could change that to a different color and then that segment will change. And then again, brightness, and speed. We also have directional options. So this is gonna be the first time that we get some directional options. Right now we're going from left to right, but we can change it from right to left. And that will change 
which way our colors are actually flowing. We're going to change it back to what we had before. And then we have our thickness. Right now it's on the thickest, but we could change it to normal and it will shrink the amount of space that those take up. Now we're going to put it back onto thick. Scrolling back up, we are going to come to reactive. Now, right now it's on random. It has held on to the random pattern uh, that I set originally. But what this will do is if I touch any of the keys on the keyboard, they will randomly light up and the random will also change the color. So I don't have a set color palette. They will just randomly cycle. We have our brightness and speed again, and we're going to come down to our ripple effect. Tap on the keyboard. You'll see that when I tap on things, it ripples across the keyboard. It has random or you can change it to a pattern so that specific colors happen at specific intervals. You have your brightness, you have your speed and then your thickness again. Coming down, we have Starry Night. And what this is going to do is just randomly light up letters. Whether you type on them or not, the letters and numbers will just randomly turn on and off. Right now I have background turned off, but if you turn background on, that will turn on the LED backlights to your keycaps instead of just the letter light. We also have random or we can change our two tone colors or we could have a single color. We have our brightness setting as usual. I have it at 50 and then speed, just like with everything else. Quicksand. Again, we have this set as a random effect, but what quicksand will do is starting at the top, it will blend down into the keyboard, kind of like you're sinking in quicksand. You've got your top level, and then as pressure builds, it sinks down towards your other keys. You have your brightness settings, you have your speed settings, and you have your directional. Right now I have from top to bottom, but we could swap that from bottom to top, and it looks like a little pyramid going the opposite direction. We're going to put it back down to direction going down. Moving on, we have current and current's going to light up your keys from left to right, kind of looking like a little little wave pattern. It's not as random as starlight, starry night was, but it's still randomly lighting up things as it goes across. You have the ability to select a single color or you can have it on random. For pattern, you can have single, double or random. So that's going to be your coloration as well. Brightness and speed. We have raindrops, and that's going to be lighting effects that go down a row of your keyboard looking like rain. Again, we have random right here. We have background. So just like before, if we select single, that will light up the background. We can change that color if we don't want our background color to be bright white. We're just going to turn that off to make it easier to see the pattern as it falls. Again, random colorization, LED. We have our LED brightness and we have our speed. Moving on from our lighting tab, we actually have our power options. Wireless power saving options, right now you can see it's charging, it's at 93%. Lighting altered when battery percent reaches, and then it will adjust the lighting effects when you reach specific points of power left in the keyboard. So you got 50%, you got 25%, and never switch to sleep mode after being idle for. This is in minutes, I have it for three minutes, help save the battery. If you don't type on the keyboard, after three minutes, it goes into power saver mode. And then power saver mode on, which is turn off the keyboard LEDs or decrease the LED brightness. So I just have them turn off the LEDs altogether. And last tab over here is our firmware. In the upper right hand corner here, you can see that we were on default. And what this is, is the default profile for my Claymore 2. You can have up to six because you have a default and then five individual profiles for the Claymore 2. Selecting the three dots next to your profile, you can export it, duplicate it, rename it, create a new profile, create new, import, sync all profiles, and reset all profiles. And that's the majority of what you can do to change your Claymore 2 using Armor Crate. However, if we come over to our devices and select this, we have a secondary tab for our macros. If we wanted to set up a macro using Armor Crate, this is where we would do it. We can simply select record and then type what we want to be recorded and then stop and then that will create a macro, which we can save, edit or cancel, or we can clear it. I'm going to cancel because we don't want to actually save that. We can insert a macro. We can select options here and it will show us record delay, fix delay, toggle. There are lots of things that you can do with macros. And if you're of the type that needs them, this is where you can kind of get a little more advanced than what you can do just from the keyboard itself. Coming down with our rest of our options in Armor Crate, we'll just breeze through these very quickly. You have Aura Sync, you need to have a compatible device. A Claymore 2 is a compatible device. 
you have your aura effects right here and then aura performance mode extra steps not going to get into it too much you have access to your gaming library here you can see some of the games that i have if i select them from here they will launch the game as you see right there moving down we have our scenario profiles so right now I have one set up for Diablo 3 and one for Lost Ark. What this will allow you to do is pick a specific lighting cue that you'd like for that game. So if I were to create a new one, I will call this call this Valheim, and then it's going to show me the system configuration. So volume, input device, and then we have our color. So if I don't want static, maybe I want Starry Night. When I start up Valheim, it will change to volume 28, use the Claymore, Starry Night. Hit save. Now I have a Third, now I have a third option set up. You've got featured, which is really them just pushing information to you. You have news. Again, this is just gonna be informative information for you. Really don't come down here. You've got your user center, which you will need to create an account for. And then you've got your settings, which will allow you to choose the theme. You've got the ROG theme, you've got the gaming armor crate theme, and then you've got your ASUS armor crate theming. You have your choose armor crate landing page. So you can select which one of these tabs you actually want to end up on. I generally keep it on Aura Sync because that's where I'm going to go. You've got your update center and then you've got about. And that has been a more in-depth look than I thought I would do for the Armor Crate software for the ROG Claymore 2. There you have what you can actually additionally do using Armor Crate with this keyboard. And I do realize that I'm not focusing on a lot of the game heavy things that this keyboard can do because yes, it is primarily a gaming keyboard. That is what it was made for. That's who it was made for. However, I sit in both worlds. I sit in the corporate world, but I also like gaming on the side. And one thing that I'll mention right there, you have the ability to turn off your Windows key. So whether you're gaming or not, that is a godsend to have if you've ever tapped it during a presentation or in the middle of a raid. Whether you're using the keyboard for gaming or in the business world, you're getting a mechanical keyboard because of the way it feels and because of the way it sounds. So here's a typing test to give you an idea of what, what you can expect to hear from the Claymore 2 with the blue keys. I do realize that I've been focusing mostly on the practical uses for this keyboard, even though it is primarily a gaming keyboard. But that's because it is useful in both gaming and the corporate life, which most of us, let's be honest, sit between. But because of that, and because it's wireless and has a detachable keypad, that brings the price of this up quite a bit when you're comparing it to other mechanical keyboards because you're getting all of those options. It is rather on the expensive side when you're comparing this to other mechanical keyboards. Just keep that in mind. I know it's gonna feel like sticker shock when you're looking at this, but keep in mind, you're getting all of those options, the wireless, the unique keycaps, whether you get the reds or the blues, the detachable and reattachable and either side number pad, all of these things raise the price. But because of that, if you're on the fence like I was, trying to figure out what the perfect mechanical keyboard setup would be for you, for me, this was as close as I could get. I have the option of having the TKL. I have the number pad. I have the adjustable number pad. It's wireless. To me, this is the perfect setup, even at that higher price range. If you're considering it, I strongly recommend it. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.